meeting will be in order. If we get through it, then. Um, okay, so this is the 2013 World Science Fiction Society business meeting. Uh, Seth Breitbart, to my left, is our timekeeper. Uh, Lisa Hayes is the videographer. We may have to uh, recess briefly if uh, necessary to uh, change the over recording. Uh, Linda Deneroff is our secretary. Um, oh, I made an error on the slide. Um, at the far end of the table over there is Teresa Renner, who is our Sergeant Arms. Ah. Uh, <laughs> suggested, suggested to me that we might uh, be one. I'm sorry, I'm going to zoom by you again. Go ahead. I promise never to touch. I'm not offended, then. <laughs> um, I'll add, uh, and last, let's see, Ken Bloom is our uh, Deputy Guiding Officer in the audience, and I'm Donald Eastley. Uh, so, let's see, some introductory things. Um, people should be aware that this is, going to, this is being reported, uh, and anybody can report or take pictures or whatever, unless we vote to go into, uh, to stop recording. Uh, if you're speaking, I would recommend you come to this the lectern so you can be seen and heard. Uh, it's actually a big room with lots of people, and the acoustics are not that good. So, uh, it would be a good thing. Uh, there is a tennis list going around. Where is the attendance list out of curiosity? Okay, so that should continue around and uh, end up at the front, and we'll, we'll check again later if there's people who have not reported their attendance. There are business meeting attendee ribbons at the front table. Um, this, there, there's only one that's not different for different days or anything like that. So uh, if you want to, just come on up and grab one. Um, let's see. Yeah, the rules, right. Okay, so uh, there's lots of rules, and uh, I think that if I try to go over them all, it would take a long time, and not really, you know, stick that well. Uh, but uh, the main rule I would say is that if you uh, wish to speak, the answer is to stand up, uh, unless you have this disability, and uh, like say, Mr. Chairman, or something like that, I don't know. And, um, well, you know, I don't, I, if you don't know what the right thing to do is, but you know what you're trying to accomplish, I'll try to help you with that. Uh, the main thing, one main thing is that except for certain kinds of privileged business or, or special requests, uh, uh, you can't uh, get recognition while the previous person is still standing. So you need to wait till the previous speaker has sat down before you stand up and do this. Um, there will be time limits on, on lots of things, so uh, when things tend to be after the time limit has expired under our rules, you can still make motions like um, and refer to committee and stuff like that, but uh, you can't debate any further unless we vote to extend debate. We've been a little inconsistent about extending debate times in the past, so but I will uh, require two-thirds vote to extend uh, debate times. Okay. So the agenda you have, all I hope, uh, is divided into sections, and they're currently ordered sort of by the Roberts default. However, last year we reordered those and considered them uh, to order section three, which is new constitutional amendments, four, which is, uh, actually three is, is uh, ratifications of constitutional amendments passed the previous year. Four is essentially new business that's not part of the committee report. One are the committee reports, many of which contain motions, and two were reports from World Times. And there are, there are other later sections, but they're not relevant to this preliminary business meeting. Our main goal here is we can take care of us many committee reports, we can pass resolutions, and uh, we can set time limits for constitutional amendments, um, but the, uh, we can't actually ratify uh, or pass constitutional amendments at this meeting. They get passed on to the main business meeting, uh, which actually tomorrow and actually Sunday is technically a main business meeting, although it's also the site selection meeting at which site selection business will be the highest priority. So on Sunday, that's what comes more first. So anyway, section three is empty. There are no constitutional amendments up for ratification. That simplifies that. And I'd recommend that we uh, follow the order 4.1, which is new constitutional amendments, then the committee reports, then 4.2, which is new resolutions, and then uh, 4.2, and then section two. And we might not get all the way through this, in which case, Whatever we don't get to, uh, gets handled tomorrow. And 
also, uh, as requested and done by the announced consent last year, we considered motions that were parts of committee reports at the time the committee report came up, rather than going through the whole committee report and then having a later section where all these motions come up. So is there any objection to the two middle bullets here, that we go through the agenda in that order and that we consider report uh, motions in committee reports at the time the committee report is made? Seeing none, we'll follow that agenda. Uh, also, the one thing we need to do today is accept the nominations for the Mark Protection Committee, and I suggest doing that right after the Mark Protection Committee report. And we'll see some objection, we'll follow that. Seeing none, okay. Uh, one item before we actually dive into it. So the maker of motion 4.1.7, which is... Uh, YA. 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 Um, on page 41 of your agenda, has requested uh, that they be allowed to withdraw the motion, since this request arrived after any other person could introduce a similar motion to say renew it. It requires unanimous consent. Is there any objection to that withdrawal? Seeing none, the motion is withdrawn. <laughs> Stand, stand up. If you want to talk, stand. Yeah. Does this mean that the, the young adult Hugo will not be voted on? Correct. That's right. Objection. I, I do object to that. Uh huh. Well, we haven't gone on to the next item of business, so there is, is an objection. Um, so in that case, it's not withdrawn, and we'll come up in the order. Uh, in back. Uh, motion to withdraw the motion and instead Second. Uh, Could you come up with the, the, the right? Th that was a motion to refer the item to committee, yeah, uh, and I, I believe that's not in order at this time. We in order when it comes up later. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. would, would the datum that the motion is being withdrawn to ask it to go to a committee of the people in the room to consider to make a motion that would possibly pass the business meeting, would that alleviate your objection? This is not, well, none of this is in order at this point, okay, there was, uh, you can withdraw a motion at any time, it doesn't have to be on the floor, it can be, you know, but you can't do all these other things unless it's the motion on the floor, it's not the motion on the floor. So when it comes up, we can do all these wonderful things, or think about them. Thank you. Okay, so, um, under the proposed ordering, we're now on section 4.1. Mr. And, Chairman. Yes. The, the Ah, yes, excuse me. Uh, I was going to add that to the slide. I forgot that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been requested, and I think this is reasonable as a. Uh, well, okay, let's. I only had a few slides. Um, it's been requested as a matter of uh, privilege of the assembly that people convert their sound making communication devices to not make sound. Or perhaps turn them off or set them to stun or whatever. <laughs> okay. So we are now on uh, section 4.1 uh, constitutional amendments, and uh, the first item there is. 4.1.1.1, World Time Publications. So uh, I suggest that when this comes up at the main business meeting, it have a time limit of 12 minutes for debate. Yes? Five minutes. Five minutes suggested. Are there other values? <coughs> Hearing no other values, uh, I'll take the vote uh, as to whether 12 should be uh, replaced by five. Uh, all those in favor of uh, making it five minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those in favor of leaving it 12 minutes, the ayes uh, have the ayes had it, and so it is recorded to five minutes. Okay. Next item is uh, 4.1.1.2, um, which, uh, uh, sorry, uh, that is, so this is an amendment to the first uh, our, uh, item, uh, and this can be considered here. Yeah. Um, 
they would amend the proposal on work on publication by striking out uh, all of the words that the proposal would add uh, in the commentary. So the proposal would just read to strike out the article concerning uh, publications. So uh, that was submitted with a written mover and seconder. Uh, does the, we, we can consider that now, and, uh, or we can just defer this all to the main business meeting. Um, is there any objection to considering this at the main business meeting? I guess not. Okay, so that will carry forward and we'll consider that at the main business meeting. No, no, it, it's, it, the time for considering the amendment is taken out of the time for the main uh, item. So. Next, 4.1.2, no representation without taxation. Uh, I suggest a time limit of six minutes for this constitutional amendment. Does anybody have any other suggestions? Yes? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Uh, any other value suggested? Uh, yeah? Fifteen. Fifteen, okay. Any other? Three. Five. Okay. Uh, five, six, ten, and fifteen. I'm going to do this by the, the filling the blank procedure. Any other values people would like to be considered? They have to be a positive whole integer number of minutes, <laughs> according to our rules. Okay, so we'll vote uh, starting with the largest uh, at debate time uh, and then moving downwards. And the first one to get a majority will be the debate time. Those in favor of 15 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those in favor, those against? Okay, the nays have it. Those in favor of 10 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? It looks very even to me. Um, I, I guess we could uh, do a uh, do a serpentine book program. Okay. Okay. Well, let's do a standing vote. All those in favor of 10 minutes, please stand up. Okay. Thank you. That's it. And all those in favor against 10 minutes, please stand. Okay, the ayes have it, it's 10 minutes. Next, uh, item 4.1.3, uh, Keep Us Together. Uh, I'm assuming people have had a chance to read these, and we have probably delayed going to the order. I, I suggest a time of six minutes for this constitutional amendment. Uh, there are other values suggested? Eight. Any other values? Okay, we'll go ahead. Uh, those in favor of uh, changing to eight minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you, those opposed? Nays have it, so it's six minutes. Next we have 4.1.4, uh, best dramatic Presentation in very short form. Objection to consideration. Second. The consideration has been objected to. There is no second. Uh, second is not required for objections to the consideration. Uh, those in favor of considering, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you. I believe there's more than twice as many opposed as in favor, so the motion will not be considered. Short title, the leading best fanzine, best fan writer, and best fan artist from the Yes, we can oh, consideration. The objection has been raised for consideration of this constitutional amendment. All those in favor of consideration, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you. There being more than two being more than two-thirds of the negative, the motion will not be considered. Sure. Uh, I've been requested that I remind the body that in order to object to consideration or make other motions, you have to stand and be recognized uh, in almost all cases. Uh, I'm not sure what other cases there are where you, where you don't need to be recognized, I mean, but uh, you can be assertive if the chair is ignoring you for some reason. <laughs> or in this case, although there were at least one or two people who yelled at DC without standing improperly, there was one person who stood, I believe, and did that. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Next item of business is 4.1.6, short title List Fiscal Accountability Act of 2013. I suggest an eight minute debate limit for this item. Five. Five. Other values? Two. Two. <laughs> Any other values? Okay, I'll use the fill in the blanks procedure, uh, starting with eight minutes. Those in favor of eight minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, nays have it. Uh, those in favor of five minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it, so the debate time is set at five minutes. Uh, our next item is 4.1.7. Gentlemen, all here. Object to consideration has been raised. All those in favor of considering, please raise your hand. The motion is an objection to consideration to item 4.1.7. Young adult Hugo. Uh, first of all, the means uh, we vote against the consideration. It's out of the final it's vote. Gone. That's right. So it's it's yeah, I think about I'll ask those in favor of considering it and those against considering it, and if there are two thirds in the negative, then it will not be considered. Those in favor of considering this item, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you. The nays are more than two-thirds, so the motion will not be considered. Hmm? Yes. There was a previous uh, request that we move this to committee. No. There was a request to move the committee. It was not in order at that time. Uh, is it in order now? No. Not no. anymore. The motion is no longer before the body. <laughs> It's the nature of things is that an objection to consideration has priority because once you allow a motion to amend or a motion to refer to committee to come up and uh, be made and stated, then it's no longer in order to make the objection to consideration. So objection to consideration has priority and, and needs to be considered first. Um, next item is 4.1.8. Uh, short title, Expand Best Fan Artist to Include All Types of Fanish Art, Not Just Static and Visual. I recommend an eight-minute time limit for this item. Five minutes. Five. Fifteen. Fifteen. One. <laughs> One. Ten. Yeah. Ten? Okay. Other values? Okay, we'll proceed from the longest uh, voting to fill the blank. Could you uh, repeat what they are? Yeah, the current values suggested are 15, 10, 8, 5, and 1. Those in favor of 15 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you. The nays have it. Uh, those in favor of 10 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The nays have it. Those in favor of 8 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and the debate will be set at eight minutes. Okay, uh, as per our decision, we next go to section one of the agenda. The next item is the Mark Protection Committee Report. So, can I leave the chair? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm Tim Stanley, Chairman of the Worcester Smart Protection Committee. The report of the Mark Protection Committee and its constituent subcommittee, the Hugo Awards Marketing Committee, begins on page 49 of your agenda packet. I will certainly not go into it, you need to, uh, but I will call attention to some of the uh, more important things we did this year. Uh, in particular, uh, the committees have managed to finally uh, reorganize and gain con proper control of all of WSPIS's internet domain names, which had been in a mixed up state for some time. It was not obvious to any of you going to the websites that this was the case, but it was. Uh, the, as I say, the Hugo Awards Marketing Committee's report is also separately attached. The Worldcon website working group, chaired by Mike Scott, uh, did not submit a report. I do have a report from Mr. Scott. Uh, he says, he reiterates the domain name correction and says that due to house moving, uh, he was unable to attend this convention or get a report together. However, he does uh, have uh, more information he's going to be submitting to the Mark Protection Committee, which we'll meet uh, at the end after the final business meeting or on Monday, depending on how much time we have on Sunday. 
Are there any questions of the Water Protection Committee at this time? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, as uh, previously uh, announced, I'd like to uh, open the floor for nominations. The uh, information is right on the beginning of the agenda as to whose term is expiring. Uh, the elected members of the term are expiring are Ben Yallo, Tim <coughs> Fandry, and Tim Ellingworth. Um, are there any nominations to those positions, the, those three slots? Yes, Mr. Yallo. Um, I move to renominate the existing members. Second. Okay. Um, existing members have been renominated. Are there any other nominations? Ted Geisler. Okay. You accept? Uh, sure. Okay. So I, I actually, everybody who uh, to appear on the ballot needs to accept a uh, nomination and fill in. Uh, we, have, well, we have a former here for that purpose uh, and indicate their zone of residence uh, as of the current time. So, uh, and they need to get to the secretary by the time set by the secretary. Um, Nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. You got to print it. So. You won't have time to print a ballot. Uh, well, five o'clock this afternoon. Yeah. It would be easy to make handwritten ballots for all. Anyway, uh, okay. It's five p.m. today. Uh, are there are four people who have been nominated? Are there any other nominations? Seeing none. Moving on to uh, the nitpicking and fly specking committee. Uh, do you want me to do it, Don? Because you're the sure. You might as well do it. Uh, I'm a member of the committee. Tim, the only one that's up here is Chair Cohen, and the chair is here. So. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the nitpicking and fly specking committee has. Uh, Done it's done what it can to keep our standing uh, resolutions and rulings of continuing effect updated, and we also now, excuse me, and after some discussion, we have also submitted the passage or recommending the passage of a resolution, uh, number 1.2.1 1 .1, that uh, refers to how we administer section 6.5 uh, of the Constitution regarding counting for none of the above, no award slash. And uh, I don't think I need to read the discussion here. Once the meeting wants it done, but uh, it is a resolution, and therefore I guess can be dealt with here. All right, the third is being second, introduced by the Nick Fishing and Fly Specking Committee. Uh, I'll second it. That okay. doesn't need a okay. yes. uh, point of inquiry. Um, sure. I, I don't have section 6.5 with me. Uh, could, could the chair perhaps give a summary of what this means? Sure. And actually, that reminds me of something else I'll do right after this. But, uh, uh, so, Section 6, uh, Article 6 has the name Constitution. Uh, section 6.5 is runoff. After a tentative winner is determined, unless the runoff candidate shall be the sole winner, the following additional test shall be made. Number of ballots preferring the runoff candidate to the tentative winner is greater than the number of ballots preferring the tentative winner to the runoff candidate, and the runoff candidate should be declared the winner of the election. The question is what to do if for bullet ballots are ones that do not list both of the, both the winner and the runoff. And the uh, resolution says that it should be something which lists only the tentative winner should be counted as preferring that to the runoff, and something which lists only the runoff should be counted as referring that to the tentative winner, rather than restricting this uh, additional count to only the ballots that have both of them listed. Uh, yeah. Could you tell me what the runoff, what the person is running for? It, this affects both the site selection and the Hugos, and it uh, it's an obscure provision which I'm not sure has ever had much effect. Uh, it's uh, fine. It's just running. Yeah. Were they running? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I would like to point out that although we do this, it has never, to my knowledge, actually been been, involved, been, been successful. And the method suggested here, having been both involved in Hugo and Site Selection County, is the way it is currently done. Okay, so this is intended to sort of ratify current practice. 
I have an inquiry, and what happens if neither is listed on the ballot? Then, then it has no effect on this uh, additional determination. So is there any objection to this resolution? Hearing none, it passes by unanimous consent. <coughs> ah, yes, yes. So, something I, I, I was going to announce at the beginning of the meeting, uh, it won't really have a big effect on most people. Uh, I was going to put it on the slide, but I forgot to. So, if we look at the Constitution, uh, and, uh, <laughs> no, nothing good starts. Um, in, in particular, uh, let's see. That would be uh, section 3.11.1 of the Constitution. There's a reference to section 6.3. And also, in section 4.5.4 of the Constitution, there's a reference to section 6.3. Those are both typos. It's actually section 6.4. <laughs> Similarly, in the standing rules, uh, section 6.2 of the Standing Rules refers to Section 6.3 of the Constitution when it should refer to Section 6.4. I believe these errors have been there for three years. <laughs> and um, they're pretty minor, and it, the reference is pretty close to the right section. You know, so I don't think anybody has been confused. Just for the sake of accuracy, I thought I would point that out. Did do you yes. need a resolution uh, to change the number? No, no, the Secretary is authorized to fix the mistakes. Can it be a uh, personal request? Can um, no. the relevant change be uh, printed up for tomorrow's agenda? So people are definitely aware. Because it's difficult to, to follow. I'll make a slide. Yeah. <laughs> the question was whether it could be added to the agenda for tomorrow. And I'll, uh, people, I'll remind people. Uh, so next item is 1.3, the Worldcon Runners Guide Editorial Committee. We have a report that we Mr. Chairman and uh, everybody in the audience, my name is Mike Wilma. I'm the chairman of the Worldcon Runners Guide Committee. Um, we've made some more incremental progress in the guide. Unfortunately, almost everybody on the committee is involved with one of the five bids for this year. <laughs> so there hasn't been a lot of activity, but we've made a little bit of progress, and I suspect that as of Sunday, many of us will be available <laughs> to work some more on it and be able to give uh, uh, a more advanced report next year. Uh, but for now, if anybody has any suggestions or want to be on the committee, Please contact me. Uh, I'll be at the Phoenix Fan Table for most of the weekend, and uh, or you can contact me through um, my email address, which is uh, first initial last name M Wilmoth at uh, Earthlink.net. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Earthlink yeah. with a K or Earthlink with a G? Earthlink, Earthlink with a K. Thanks. You're welcome. Yes. Oh. I'm your time to speak. Okay, thank you. Oh, one more. Sir, are you a turtle? I am not a turtle. I am a mammoth. <laughs> thank you. So, although it's something brief, I guess I can repeat it, but really it is better for people to come to the podium and speak there. So, next we have uh, 1.4. We were eligible to you rest of the World Committee Report. So this has constitutional amendments, it's got resolutions, it's got three minority reports, and a partnership here for you. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Ben Yallo, I'm the chair of the committee. What we've tried to do is organize the committee reports in ways so that it's obvious what you're voting on and what the what the intent is and what will be accomplished by voting either yes or no on these. Uh, I hope we've succeeded. Uh, the first resolution is easy and that one simply says we need to reappoint hero because unlike some of the other committees, the hero committee goes away unless it is reappointed. So the first motion, which is 1.4.1, 1 
simply moves to extend Hero for another year. Is there any discussion on this motion? Yes. Just why, why, do we extend, why do we keep extending it one year? Why you can only extend it one year. The Constitution provides that any committee which is not written into the rules automatically expires at the end of every, at any work on business meeting that doesn't explicitly vote to extend it. So the Market Protection Committee is in the Constitution, and uh, the, uh, some of the two other committees are in the standing rules, I believe, but, or our Constitution, but the Hero is not in the rules, so it has to be voted on every business meeting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Chairman, given that there is a minority report motion that would uh, obviate the need for the committee, we maybe better to postpone this issue until after that. Um, we note that if the minority report motion is approved, it would not go into effect for another two years. Therefore, it has no effect on the need for 1.4.1. Can you explain what HERO is? Um, the HERO committee stands for the Euro eligibility for the rest of the world. Uh, that committee is charged with reporting back to the business meeting whether or not it is recommending something be done to make non-US or non-North American or non-English or any of those non-whatevers uh, eligible under 3.2.3 of the Constitution. For the Euros. Yeah, 3.2, so, sorry, for the, the 3.2.3 clearly is Euros, because Section 3 is Euros. Everybody knows that. This is a, a recommendation to extend that. These are eligible, uh, but it, uh, this would extend, extend their eligibility. Since this Committee has been in existence for Could you come I up and speak louder, please? Sorry. Since this committee has been in existence, I think, for at least five years, and we keep extending it, would it not be proper to put it into the Constitution so we don't have to keep extending it? And I think it's going to be needed every year. Well, there's another motion later which would obviate the need for it by changing the Constitution. So, anyway, there's the. the, the no. Is there further discussion on this resolution? <laughs> Seeing none, is there any objection to passing this resolution? Seeing none, passes by unanimous consent. Okay, the next motion, 1.4.2, is the extended eligibility motion, which basically and I'm not going to go into it in detail on what 323 says unless people request it. What it says is that non-U.S. works that are then published in the U.S. are made eligible in that year as well as the year when they were originally published outside the U.S. The, the Constitution authorizes this motion, but requires that if this motion is passed, it requires a three-quarters vote as opposed to the normal majority vote. So when Don counts it, it's got to be a three-quarters vote in order to pass this. Yes. Um. Could I ask for a very brief uh, description of why the uh, suggested change from two thirds to two quarters? Uh, that's not on the floor at the moment. May I ask for a clarification? Sure. Um, what categories do this apply to? All the other categories. All the other All the works that were taken in. Only the individual work you look at. Yes. Right. Would you would you please come up to the floor to when you speak for two reasons? One, we want to catch you on camera so that I can proof my notes against the video, and two, so that everybody can hear you speak. Sorry, it's my really image important. Don't on camera. <laughs> so uh, there is also um, minority report. Right. That's the next thing is. The Minority Report 1 contains a proposed amendment to this motion. 
May I? Yes, I just wonder, I'm trying to clarify why we were going to Minority Report 1, because it might right. not be immediately obvious. Okay, um, London has announced that LungCon 3 will be administering the retro Yugos, which are the Yugos that are set up, and the constitutional provision says that you can award Yugos for works 75, essentially 75 years later. Um, there is a question, because of the way the constitutional provisions were written, that did not say whether this extension motion would automatically cover both the current year Yugos and the retro Yugos. This motion, as initially phrased, if you read the further provided clause, it says, further provided that, if passed, this motion shall automatically only cover the current year egos and not the retros. Uh, since there was a dispute as to whether or not that is in fact what the business meeting had intended when it first passed the retro clause, into the Constitution. There is a minority report that says that the further provided says that a retro motion automatically shall cover both the regular Yugos and the retros. Note that this does not, this only covers what automatically happens. Yes. Should the automatic not happen, there is a later one, there is a later resolution that says, even if it's not automatic, we are proposing that there be a retros extension passed. But the first question is, is this automatically in effect? So therefore, Minority Report 1, which is now going to, onto the floor, is a motion to amend the further provided to reverse the meaning of the further provided clause. Okay, so uh, generally our rules provide a five minute limit for amendments, so I'm going to apply a five minute debate limit to this amendment. Um, and uh, does that count as a speech in favor? What do you think? I think it's. I think it's I, I think it's close enough that I have no objections to treating this as a speech in favor. Okay, is there a speech against this amendment? Well, I guess we're going to have a, a brief recess here for technical reasons.